What is up, bass fishing freaks? Luke Reeser here from Too Fat to Hunt Outdoors. Well, you're probably wondering, Luke, why do you have your ice shack set up in the shop? Well, long story. So I got with my buddy Steve today, Steve from Dunbarton, and we were going to go out and do some ice fishing. And we couldn't decide which lake we were going to go to. We were going to go to a lake east of us where there's some pike and uh, try to catch some of them tip-ups, but I didn't really have a lot of time with taking the kids to school. Uh, Lainey's sick, homesick today with ear infection, and I had a doctor's appointment this afternoon for her, so we decided just to go out to our home lake and just try to jig for some panfish. Didn't turn out so well. I'm gonna show you a few clips about how our day went, and then if you make it to the end of the video, I'll tell you about the real interesting things that happened as we were leaving the lake and when we got back to the shop stay tuned folks you don't want to miss this shalange hunting starts right now Pretty nice shack. Where'd you get it? <laughs> I got it from Dunbarton Farms. Betcha. Fresh produce. How do you like your eggs? Dunbarton Produce and Processing. Did you get her all staked down? Yeah, I got a logo. I got a logo. Oh yeah, the fish. That's a bass. Big belly bass. That's what we catch here at Too Fat to Hunt Outdoors. Big belly bass. Oh. <laughs> he's back up there. That's a big one. He's gone. Come back, Nat! Yeah, yeah, call him in. Yeah, call him in. Matt? Here. Here. Matt! Here, bird. Here, fish. <laughs> Here, fish. <laughs> Look at he's coming. Here, fish. Here, fish. Come on. Come on, fish. Here, call for him. Burr. Burr. Swim off. Something's burning, dude. Let's Back up. <laughs> okay, so he comes up when I jig the shit out of it, but he won't bite it when I'm moving it. He won't bite it when I dead stick it. Is it on fire? <laughs> Something is burning. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Got one on. Yes! My first dogfish through the ice. Let's eat it, Steve. Let's do it. Looks good. Just caught a dogfish. That's how you cook dogfish? That's how you do it. Don't even have to play them. Need a longer fork. It's getting hot. My fingers are getting hot. Ooh! Ooh. She's burning up nice. Mm. With my hand. <laughs> <laughs> my first ever dogfish. Mmm. Just so happens I caught one too. Weird. I wish we would have got Dunbart and Steve's on camera though. This is really good. Yeah. Ice fishing dogs are the best dogs. Big old Papa Bluegill. Dinner. Dinner. Catch and cook. Man, 
man's got to eat. First bite of the day, and it's a big, solid gill. He got her good, too. Give this one to Lisa. Yay! Women gotta eat too. Absolutely. Unless we start really smoking them. What color? White. Wonder bread. White. We need a white jig. Wonder bread. Uh. There we go. Pretty windy out here. Some crazy guy drove a four-wheeler out there. And there's another guy fishing. It wasn't Steve from Dunbarton either. <laughs> it wasn't Steve from Dunbarton. Fishing sucked today. We've been here for like three hours, maybe four. We haven't really started trying yet, though. <laughs> Drilled a whole bunch of holes, didn't mark any fish. Drilled some more holes, didn't mark any fish. Drilled some more holes, didn't mark any fish. Came over, drilled some more holes, put the shack on top of it. Steve had a bite, but he was Snapchatting. He missed it. Then I caught a nice bluegill on the Wonder Bread. So we're going to keep trucking along, see if we can salvage this day. Welcome back, folks. I hope you all enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed my dogfish catch and cook. And uh, so anyways... We were getting ready to leave out there, and the wind had picked up so bad, we put the shack up, and we had to strap all four corners down, and we had to strap the, the sides here. We had to tie ropes to them and strap them because the wind kept pushing, pushing the sides of the blind in. So it was really windy, and throughout the day of being out there, the snow was drifting so bad that it drifted almost halfway up the shack. So we're getting ready to leave and Steve says, I'll go out and take the steaks out. You stay in here. And I said, all right. I said, you get all the steaks out and then we'll lift the shack up and, you know, set it to the side, get it over top the sled. Well, me not thinking, I did not put the cover on the auger blade. And when we went to lift one side of the shack up, the wind caught underneath of it and blew the shack. And the bottom of it got stuck on the auger blades and ripped a big hole. And ripped a big hole in the skirting and then up the side of the shack. So, lovely. Oh. Goddamn ice auger. I forgot to put the cover on it. And the shack took off in the wind. Ripped her a little bit. So then... We got the shack off and we went to, to close all the sides in and fold it up and it wouldn't fold up right. So we had to pull it all back out and then the wind caught it again and it was a pain in the ace. So we finally got it down again and went to fold it up again and it still wouldn't go and then all of a sudden snap snap and it folded up. So I'm like, you know what, I'm pretty sure some of the posts inside just broke. So at that point I really didn't care. So I'm like, we're going to get this sucker in your truck, we're going to get it back to the shop, we'll set it up in the shop where there's heat and no wind and we'll figure out what's going on with it. So we came back, we had one bluegill as you seen earlier, big bluegill. So I took that bluegill and I just dumped it out in front of the shop on the cement. There's a little bit of snow there. I'm like, all right, you can stay there. It'll be good and frozen. And then I'll clean it. And I was actually gonna clean it, cook it, and eat it for this video and just do a one bluegill catch and cook. Um, so anyways, pause that thought, put the fish out there, come in the shop, set the shack back up in here. And as we're setting it up, I heard ting, ting, poles were dropping inside. Not exactly the drop your poles that I usually want. So we go in there and there's one rod laying on the ground. Luckily, after looking at it, it didn't break. The rods just kind of snap up in there. So I grabbed the channel locks, we got that fixed. And uh, yeah. So now I'm down here with some duct tape and we're gonna duct tape the hole in the bottom of the shack. But, back to that fish that was outside. So the bluegill was laying outside the shop. 
So we get done with this. I gave Steve my auger. He's going to go try to put a new adapter on it. Um, anyways, open the door, and Steve goes, boy, that's a big bird. As this hawk flew away, he was landed right by the door of the shop. And then we got looking. That freaking hawk came down and took my bluegill. I got robbed by a hawk in the city limits. A hawk stole my 9-inch bluegill from right outside the shop and took off with it. Can you believe that? I can't make this shit up, man. Oh, what a day. You know, it would be one thing if a mad, angry angler took my fish, but a hawk? Oh. So no catch and cook for me. I don't get to eat today because apparently that hawk needed that fish more than I did. Anyways, folks, I hope you all enjoyed this story. Enjoyed the one fish catch that we had today, plus the dogfish catch and cook. I'm going to take this duct tape and try to, to uh, fix this tear up on the ice shack so that on my next couple days off, I can get out in the ice and try to get some good quality footage. It's going to get really cold here. Uh, tomorrow is supposed to be negative 20 and windy, followed by negative 35 and windy. So hopefully by the next my next couple days off, it'll be somewhat decent and fishable. But it's looking like it's going to be pretty windy for the next week or so. So who knows? If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do that now. Hit the bell so you get notified every time I put out a new video. Luke Reeser signing off. Always remember, you're never too fat to fish.